question is from Ronert Nacho. Are inner thigh workouts bad for men? Yeah. Bad. Justin does it Romer all the time. Nacho. Yeah, well, Justin, <laughs> I love that Justin's name. a big inner thigh guy. I am. I'm a big inner thigh guy. I uh, do a lot of uh, good girls. Uh, <laughs> squeezy, squeezies. Yeah, squeezies. Yeah, no, of course they're beneficial. I mean, I, and that's the thing, too. Uh-huh. Like, you'll see you'll see how dominant you get over the years of patterns that you've established, uh, especially with athletics. And uh, to be able to stabilize, especially around the knee and ankles, like it's 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 essential that you're you're gonna you're gonna work the muscles in a way where it, where it keeps everything in track and it keeps everything in good alignment. And so to be able to you know train the inner thighs as a, in conjunction with the outer thighs and everything else uh, to to be more balanced is is optimal. It's so funny to me how body parts and exercises are you know start to get you know categorized as male or female. Now, I know part of the reason why is because when you ask men and women what body parts they want to work on, women more likely will say inner thighs and guys Mm. more likely will say things like biceps and pecs. But the fitness space is fed into this. And and, and now it's the point where a question like this pops up where it's, yeah, okay, more women want to do inner thigh workouts, but is that bad for men then? Should I not (laughs) do it? No, absolutely not. I There was a, a period in my life where I did a lot of you know what you could categorize as inner thigh training. When I did, uh, when I was doing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, a lot of the submissions and position. I mean, the guard position, for example, you need to not not just have good flexibility and mobility in your hips and in your inner thighs, but you also need to have a good squeeze. Yeah, you have to. And when you get an arm lock, especially if the guy picks you up, or a triangle choke, or you know, lots of other submissions, part of the effectiveness of this of the submission is your ability to squeeze your legs together to trap your opponent. So when I was competing, I would do things like I definitely did the the, you know, uh, abduction, excuse me, adduction machine, which is the what Justin referred to as the bad good girl bad girl machine. That's where you put your legs on the sides and you squeeze them. But one thing that I did that I found very effective is I would take a medicine ball Put it between my legs yeah. and just isometric squat. I, so yeah. I'm going to make a case of why it can be bad for men and women. Uh, to do because it's really common that you know people you know <coughs> their feet pronate or collapse in. It's very common that you see knees caving in when oh, they yeah. squat. Yeah, if they're already doing that. So if you're doing things like that, which is very common for both men and women when they're when they're squatting, you're the the femur's already internally rotating. You're already over dominant on the inner thigh, and if anything, you need to work the outside more than you need to work the inside. So. Uh, that's where it's bad. It's not yeah. bad because you're a man or a woman. If you have a breakdown mechanically in your legs and your feet are mm-hmm. are flattening or pronating in, and you're and then the, which causes the femur to internally rotate, and then you're also doing all these inner thigh exercises because you think you're trying to target an area to make it look a certain way. No, you're way. exaggerating the problem. Yeah, you're exaggerating the problem and you're making it worse. So there was very few clients that I ever did inner thigh direct work. In fact. Um, it's more common to do outer. You're right. Yeah. It's more common to do outer and or do things that ha- that stabilize the leg, right? So I like to do like a step up to a stabilization or a reverse lunge to a stabilization. And because you're having to stabilize, both the inner and the outer thigh have to kind of help work to stabilize the knee in that situation. I think too, a lot of lateral movement uh, for me, like that was a big one where, you know, your, your average person that's in the gym isn't even thinking about like adding in exercises that you move laterally in. So uh, to be able to stabilize the knee uh, left to right, uh, you know, that all like, engages those muscles anyways uh like like a lateral lunge or like a cossack squat or something like that where i'm you know i'm making sure that like i'm i can functionally uh, stabilize these forces with my body moving in those type of directions well this is why i like and this is how i you know know we cracked on stabilization exercise because we went on this kick for a long time but there there's value to it and here's a place where i see a lot of value because you take somebody and you have them this this person who comes to me and says, "Hey Adam, I want to work my inner thighs." Uh, but then I also notice that when they squat, their, their their knees are caving in, and we have this problem with the the feet pronating. Well, putting them in like a stabilization exercise, like a step up to a balance or a lunge to a balance, if your feet are collapsing and the knees collapsing in, you'll fall when you do a, an exercise where you have to stabilize on one leg. So it challenges them in that area. Meanwhile, also addressing the area they're asking you to to work on. So, you know, I much prefer doing something like that. That's why I'm not a fan of the good girl, bad girl type of machine. 
uh, because of that, because most people suffer from, you know, the flat feet. And I would much rather do something where they have to stabilize and balance on one leg, which then will not allow them to cheat and allow that knee to collapse in or the foot to flatten or else you would fall over and they have to really think about how they're grounded. Yeah. The only times I think you should target uh, inner or outer thighs is if you have identified an imbalance. So if, if you've identified a particular imbalance where the knee likes to travel one way or the other, mm -hmm. or there's a specific uh, sport or something that you're training for where you need extra lateral stability yeah. you or really need to crush watermelons between your thighs or yeah you know something like that yeah. right then then it kind of makes sense but other than that you know um besides correctional exercise purposes um or sports specific purposes i i, I rarely ever would program uh, inner or outer thigh specific exercises unless i'm correcting a problem they're not in there. I'm doing what Adam's talking about, stability exercises. We're doing unilateral movements. And then, of course, we're doing the big gross motor movements like squats and deadlifts and stuff like that. And you're going to get very well-balanced you know, leg development. Now, the inner and outer thigh muscles really act uh, mainly as stabilizers. Yeah. And they it's don't- just to keep you in good alignment. For that's, right, yeah. that's right. That's right.